Is LeBron still better than 95% in the NBA? That'll put him somewhere in the top 20 to top 22 range. I'm not talking about that shit. Y'all go ahead. He, he is absolutely 100% in the top 5%. The guy averaged 37 and 8 this year. He shot a decent percentage. His free throw percentage went up. He's calling plays out on the floor mm. while guys are playing. He is a basketball savant with or without the athleticism that he had in his first 10 years in the league. He is so intelligent. He is willing, team, uh, willing his team to wins. What he does are the intangibles that people don't know. This man was taking charges. What superstar at 38 years old, it will take two consecutive charges in the game. Those are the little things that make the difference. If you're asking me, is he, is he top 5%? 100% he is. He guaranteed, because we are all callous. We're used to this greatness that we've seen. So if there's a little bit of slippage, just a little bit, we're counting him out. Yeah, we're right. saying he got swept. That's what I'm, got I'm just pointing. That's I'm, cr that's I'm crazy. counting them out. <laughs> the Lakers got swept. <laughs> and he got fucking swept. That's, that's, hey, that's crazy because no they've been calling him Wash, what, since 2015? Never. Yeah. Wash King. Since 2000, Wash King. never. No, the Wash King came, what, 2015, 16? Who, who said that? The Wash King. Skip. It was a thing. Skip. It was there a Wash King. The, the Wash King. That was a thing. That was a thing. Yeah, you like wasn't a days. You probably wasn't like a basketball days, fan. Though. Though. Like you, probably, days. Yeah, yeah, you probably wasn't watching basketball. You never heard of the LeBron <laughs> fan talk about some LeBron Washed. Yeah, no, that was the thing. I'm just here to host. I'm not getting it. Wash you were a LeBron fan. What, what, yeah. what do you know? Wash King. Let me, you know. let me see I what know. you know. know. Let me pull it up. But top five, yes, he's still top five. Yeah, he's, still, yeah, he's still yeah, number seven. I mean, so 2021 was, I think, or 2019 was the, the first King? time. Right before COVID. Was the Wash King. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. he was kind of yeah, like, washed out. In the, in the he was washed out averaging 30. His worst year with the Lakers was actually his first year. Statistically, his worst year was the first year. He actually got better statistics as he went on yeah. and got older, which is unheard of in the NBA. You never see that happen. Listen, I think everyone, you know, just like anything, music, just anything in life, when you're just consistent all the time, you just want something new, right? So the fact that we've seen what the greats, how they fail from greatness, right? Mm -hmm. 10, 7, and then they're out of the league, right? So I, I think everyone's just like, all right, you average 20, 27, all right, just quit. Just, right. You just go. You watch. Like, <laughs> we're just trying to make them exit, right? Because yeah. even if he goes to 22, they're going to be like, yeah, that, that's it. Right. The hell out. Me, if I'm him, listen, what you just did in catching Kareem you have to be mindful that someone might try to catch you. For sure. Push it up. Fuck that. Get, mm -hmm. If you get two points a year for the next six years, mm -hmm. get them two points, add it to the total, because there's going to be someone 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now that going to put themselves in a position to knock you out. For sure. So if you don't want to get knocked out, just be mindful. Yeah. There's always someone coming after you at some point. So stay, hey, you already got it. Just try to, be, if you can build five, eight, nine more thousand points, man, fucking do that shit, man. Right. Especially out of the game. Don't be no Jordan. Right. Yeah. Don't be, don't, listen, do not be what Jordan did. He was so great that he didn't think that anyone would come after him, right? Even with the legacy, right? When we talk about Jordan versus LeBron, we always be, what if? Well, see, he retired. If he didn't retire, well, that's Jordan's fault. Right. Yep. That's Jordan's fault that he didn't take this. This, Of course he would have. Of course he would have. If he would have played all his. This, LeBron would still be trying to get that goddamn number. Yeah. But he didn't. That's that's his fault. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm saying, hey, you got four, five more years. You better keep putting them points up. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. I'm, yeah. I'm with him. Yeah, I'm with I agree. Him. Yeah. I remember my last days, boy, I couldn't do nothing. So. <laughs> I would love to have 22 points a game, you know, <laughs> in my 20th or 23rd year. Yeah. Any of us, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm with you. Keep pushing the number up because how the game has changed now with the scoring, somebody's going to be behind it. Yeah. yeah. You don't know if they're going to mm -hmm. add four points, five. You don't know right. what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah, no. Say it, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you don't right. know what's going to happen. Yeah. So let, let's face the reality. Bron's going to be 39 this season if he does come back, 21st year. Can he still be the number one option on a championship contender? Or does he need to make that shift to number two? And if he does, is he even mentally capable to accept being the number two option on the team? What, what does his number two option look like, though? Kyrie. I mean, I don't think it really matters. Yeah, I don't. Like, like I don't, because he's still going to get his. Like, I think he's the type of player that can still always get his. So it doesn't matter what, what option he is, as long as he's on the floor. But does he embrace that Paul George mentality now where it's somebody else's team? 
and I'm the two. But it's not like he's tried. He's do, he's tried yeah. it, but just mm-hmm. no one's stepping up. I don't. If I'm Kyrie good. comes there and averages 30 and LeBron averages 28, are we saying LeBron is the number two option? I mean, he's teeing it up for Anthony Davis, and he's done it publicly many, many times. He said the Anthony Davis should be the number one option. He's publicly said that a few times. He's just waiting for him to be that. Yeah. He's just not there yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we talked about that, I think, earlier in the week. We don't know if he'll ever get to that point, but Rashad, I see you over there excited. No, nah, um, because I just seen a TikTok about this. Like, LeBron has always been in, like, finals territory, the number two option, because the guys like Dwayne Wade and game sixes have 42 when it could have and should have been LeBron having the 42. He took the back seat, and he was allowed the, the number two to take the number one role. Same with Kyrie. 41 game six, I believe, came through clutch moments. When he has a guy who can come in and take clutch moments to the next level, it gives pressure release for him. But AD's not giving him pressure release where he can be sit, sit back in, in, in a game six and allow K, uh, AD, uh, AD to have like 45, 10 and do his thing. So that in this series, he wasn't able to do that. Right. He didn't have a number two that can catapult to number one and give him a break. What well, we seen him in game four say, look, I got a fucking number one option this shit in the first half. Where's my number two? Right. And I think that's what contributed to him making the statements after the game. Frustration. Yeah, He's like, I gave so much of myself yep. and we still didn't get a top, uh, to the top of the mountain. Yep. Yeah, especially you got a young guy like AD, a superstar in this league. He's Hey, I gave you my all in the first half. You got to be the closer. And I feel like why D. Wade and Kyrie had those opportunities because of the game plan against LeBron. Mm. So that opens up the floor for these guys to be successful. So It, it reminds me of the, the Shaq and Kobe, right? He has understood that, okay, the first three quarters, I'm the number one option, you're number two, right? Down the stretch... You're the number one option, I'm number two. Because what you do, I can't do. Shaq, Mm -hmm. you can't be the number one option if they have hack a Shaq. You can't make free throws. So yeah, one through three, you dominate, Mm -hmm. revert it, now it's Kobe's. See, if you don't have the, if you're not mindful of what the game is and what your game is, it kind of pushes this, right? If Shaq, if you can't shoot free throws, they're gonna do this. You can't be the number one option when we're trying to win. We have to give it to Kobe. He can shoot the free throws. He can hit the shots. He can go to one-on-one. That's what made the D-Wade look great with LeBron and made Mm -hmm. Kyrie look great. Mm -hmm. Those last five minutes, we're going to win or lose on what Kyrie and D-Wade do. I'm one through third. Mm -hmm. I'm getting everybody involved. But when the elements of the, it, I don't want to shoot free. If I can't shoot free throws, I don't want to. I don't want to shoot free throws at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. That's that's the guy, mm-hmm. and that's what he don't. That's what he don't have. Mm. That's what he don't have here. So when he's those last two shots, did he want to take those? Probably no, not. No. no. Yeah. You could tell. You can see it all. It, because it's he knows it's it's a forced shot. Yes. yes. And mm-hmm. those are probably when we look at it, those go back. Those are probably the two worst decisions he had yeah. made in his basketball career. But is he working on forced shots? You know, we work on last minute, last mm-hmm. second shots where it's like, let me go to my package for my last second shot. It don't look like he got that. Crazy. I'm going to my. Three, two, one. That's what I'm saying. So why does he have the ball in the last because in the last seconds of the game? And he know he don't got that. Because he wants to drive, suck it in, throw it. The Schroeder play, like we talked about. Well, LeBron does not have a signature move, like you said, for that last second shot. You got the, the, the fuck you three. The you got the fuck you set back. Yeah, you got that. The fuck you three, the love fuck you, the love fuck you three. That's what the textbook definition. We played, right? To be that guy, to be the guy who ends games, right? You have to be a one-on-one player. Yes, for sure. He is not the one-on-one player. Mm -hmm. Like Jokic, right? Jokic is, I can see why he fell in the second round. If you make him play one-on-one, two-on-two by himself, his attributes don't kick in. Right. What he's great at, you can't see that shit in the NBA combine. No. Right? You have to put him with nine other players, and then you can see what makes him intelligent and brilliant. Yeah. Same thing with LeBron, right? So when you're talking about the end of the game, that's a one-on-one juggernaut yeah. type of player. 
first, he had to have a first step, quick release. He can slow the game down. He can visualize. He know where he's going. Like, he can do that all in seconds. Yeah. That's never been him. Yeah, I mean, it's just like... He has moments, but it's not, it's not what he is. That's not his expertise. That's right. Kobe's expertise. Mm -hmm. That's Jordan's expertise. Mm -hmm. A Paul Pierce, that's what they're yeah. really good at. Yeah, just like Milwaukee Bucks, right? When you saw them win the finals, clearly Giannis is the best player. When the game's on the line, who's going to shoot that shot? Chris Middleton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chris Middleton, because he could create the space. Mm -hmm. He could hit the open jumper. You're not going to have Giannis doing a fadeaway three mm -hmm. or a 20-foot right. jumper. No. 100%. But clearly Giannis is the better player. Mm -hmm. It's also confidence, right? <laughs> Chris got the confidence <laughs> as a scorer to know, like, all I need is a little space. Yeah. Get this bitch off. Yeah, yeah. Giannis don't know, like, he's like, <laughs> eh, let me get rid of this bitch because I don't know the first thing to do to create the space or have the confidence to hit the shot. So the same thing on the other side with LeBron, I always felt like he lacked confidence in the, like the nut cutting times. Even if you're gonna get like fouled for a free throw, LeBron's always had trouble with free throws, so that was always in the back of his mind like, fuck, I gotta make these. Instead of him being downhill, knowing I can get this layup, get to the line, this is easy. So his confidence in the nut cutting time is like, it's questionable. Yeah. So he needs that Jimmy Butler level of confidence. I, I believe so. Okay. <laughs> 52 <laughs> in a game seven. <laughs> Remember, Underdog Fantasy presents this show. So do us a favor, do us a solid. Go ahead, download that Underdog Fantasy app. Use promo code GILL. They will match your first deposit up to $100. Like I said, stay away from them five pieces. I'm hooked on the five piece. You got to go two to three because somebody will betray you. Then pick I us. got betrayed last night. Who got you? Huh? Huh? Sorry ass, smart smart. <laughs> Kevin Love played 12 minutes. I just needed one more point. Like 11.5 all together. Yeah. Right? And he had 10. Take the lower. 12 minutes, never got back in. We're going to get our bread right. We, the goal is to bankrupt underdog, as you guys already know. And we're going to get our bread back, underdog. You already know that. Agent Zero. Change the game. Put that respect on his name. Look, with the honor call for greatness, the chosen a few that carry the gift of genius. Who do what they do? Who possess finesse of less with desire? It's true. I'ma say it loud, none other than who?